What's up guys, my name is Brandon and Apple just released iOS 16 beta 8 to register developers about one week after the previous beta. And as usual, it should be out for public beta testers very soon, if not available as you're watching this. And this was actually the only software that Apple released today. So no updates for iPad OS, Mac OS, watch OS, TV OS, or HomePod OS, so at least not yet. So let's go ahead and take a look at the size of this eighth iOS 16 beta. And you can see here it came in at 222.2 megabytes on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. So a lot of twos there. If we go into our settings here to check out the build number, settings general about 16.0, you could see the build number there is 20A5358A. So a very similar build to the previous beta seven build number, only like two numbers up. So it's another A build, which means as you guys probably guess, if you watched my previous videos, next up is most likely the RC build. And if we go down to the modem firmware, you can see that is 2.09. .01. Now, as far as what's new in this update, you know, since this is the eighth beta and the development of iOS 16 ended a couple of weeks ago, we're not expecting any major changes whatsoever. And after going through beta eight, I was not able to find anything different from beta seven. However, there are a few things that I wanted to mention that I hope get fixed in the final release or shortly after in 16.1. And the first one is the now playing platter on the lock screen is constantly just empty for me. And I saw this, you know, if I go right here, you can see right when I rebooted my device, right once this update installed, you can see I had music playing. I started playing music and the platter there was completely empty. I tapped on it. I locked my device, unlocked it, and it stayed empty for a while. I'd actually select a new lock screen for it to show up again. So that is still a bug here in beta eight that needs to be fixed soon. Also, speaking of that lock screen, the widgets are still very buggy. So if you go to customize right here and you try to move these widgets, especially when you have two small ones and one big one, which I think is the best kind of setup for the lock screen. If you try to move one of these over, you can see you can't really move it. It's very buggy. And even the small ones sometimes have a hard time going on the other side of the big one, as you can see, right here. And if you were to change something, like if I were to do that and then press on done, I don't think we should have this pop up right here. You know, I don't want to change my home screen wallpaper just because I changed some widgets on my lock screen. So I think that's very redundant. I think where there should be some way to get rid of this pop up, there should be some X if we don't want to have to go through this because every time I change a widget, I have to go to customize home screen, I have to tap on done, and then I have to go back. And it's just very, it just takes too long. It should not be that we should have an X on that. We shouldn't have to customize our home screen every time we just change a widget or an image on our lock screen. Oh, and also that jitter on the lock screen is still there as well. So when I press on the album artwork and then go out, you could see the music platter down here just jitters like that. It just isn't a good look, I don't think. So I hope that's not there in the final release. But at least the album artwork appears to be the same size as it was in the previous beta. Apple's made a ton of changes to the size of the album artwork on the lock screen. And I feel like it's perfect now. So I'm glad they did not touch it with beta eight. And then for those wondering if the battery percentage in the status bar has come to more devices with this beta, the answer is no. And as I mentioned previously, it's probably not going to be happening at all. So if you have an iPhone 11, iPhone 10 R or any mini phone, you're probably never going to see that battery percentage in the status bar, which you guys know my stance on that. I talked about it in my latest Apple weekly episode, not a huge fan of the current implementation, but I'm confident that Apple is going to tweak it over the next at least a year. So maybe not in iOS 16, but hopefully in iOS 17, we have some type of change where the actual graphic of the battery goes down with the percentage. That way it doesn't look like you have a full battery when you only have like 22% left. We also heard that Apple is going to be allowing us to delete the wallet application in iOS 16.1. So obviously right now we cannot delete that, but that is a feature coming very soon. That of course was spotted in the code of iPad OS 16.1 beta one. Of course we don't have a iOS 16.1 just yet. And taking a look at the release notes, you can see that nothing has really changed much. I mean, we still have quite a few resolved issues and quite a few known issues that are still not resolved, but really not too big of a change from beta seven. So we still have a few things to fix up before the final release, but none of them are really major bugs. I mean, the Amex bug was kind of the biggest one that people would notice where it removes your Amex card automatically, but that has been fixed. You just have to re-add it back 
to your wallet. But other than that, none of the bugs are anything too major. Really the most major ones are the ones I mentioned at the beginning of this video, which are not mentioned in the release notes. Now, as far as the performance goes, performance, you know, this is another A build. So as expected, it is going to feel very similar to the previous beta seven build. Anytime we have an A at the end of the build number, that indicates we're on a pretty stable release. So you're really not gonna have too many issues as far as performance goes. Now don't get, you know, bugs confused with performance. performance is just the overall raw performance you know of the device so if you check out the geekbench scores i did run a geekbench test after my device cooled down a little bit and we got the highest scores we've gotten on ios 16 yet so you can see we got a 1734 on the single core and this is the highest one right here a 4856 on the multi-core so you can see the comparison of all of these versions beta 8 you can see 4856 versus 4813 on beta 7 and you can see we got some 4700s earlier but nothing was even close to the 4856 we have here on beta 8 so that is a very good sign and honestly i would imagine that the rc build is going to have a similar score to beta 8 and might even be a little bit lower but overall you shouldn't really have too many issues here on this eighth build and i get a lot of people asking you know is the performance good enough is the battery life good enough to update on my main device well, by the way, battery life is going to be the same as beta seven. So expect the exact same battery life in beta eight as we got in beta seven. I would not expect any type of improvement to battery life until 16.1 or 16.2. But anyways, if you're asking if you should install this on your main device, I mean, we're close enough to the final release. They may as well just wait. I mean, we're a couple of weeks away from the final public release of iOS 16. So at this rate, you may as well just wait. You've waited long enough, just continue waiting for the public release. That's my suggestion. And then finally, let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So next up is going to be the RC build of iOS 16. And I'm expecting that to come right after Apple's September event on September 7th. Now it could come before, we could see an RC2 as well before the final release, but I am expecting RC on September 7th after the event and then a final public release on the following week, maybe the 12th or the 13th. Obviously the 14th is a possibility as well, but Apple tends to release them on Monday or Tuesday. So like I said, we could see an RC2 maybe on the 8th or the 9th after the Apple event, or even on a Monday, if it comes on Tuesday, if the final release comes on Tuesday. But my bet is that we just get a simple RC on the 7th and a final the following week. So obviously an RC2 is possible, but I wouldn't say it's it's likely. I think the most likely is just going from RC to final. So anyways, there you have it. That is iOS 16 beta eight, a very small update as expected. I mean, nobody was expecting anything major from an eighth beta. I don't think anybody should have expected any type of change from an eighth beta, but there you have it. I wanted to make this video just to let you guys know it has been released and what to expect next from Apple as I always do. So if you guys appreciate these videos, I would appreciate you if you gave this video a thumbs up. Also make sure to subscribe for a lot more iOS 16 coverage coming over the next few months. I was going to say a couple of months, but it's going to be a lot more than a couple of months. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.